Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. And if you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the growing family. We're aiming to hit 10k on this channel by the end of the year. I think we can do it. I believe in you. Share this video if you think it could help somebody. I'm move you forward a bit. So today I thought we could cover the subject of what impatient is really like. <laughs> Now, I've documented living in hospital for a year. Then I remember last year's admissions, which were February last year and May last year. So I've nearly been hospital free for a year. The big thing I want to talk about is when you're in hospital, it's not some fun time. It's not grippy sock vacation. No grippy sock holidays here. I say that, I've never had a pair of grippy socks given to me while I've been in hospital. So I guess I'm the hard one out. Living in hospital is horrible. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Even if you're really struggling, I still say hospital is not the best place. If you're struggling and you have made an attempt in your life, you've already made the attempt. When I was admitted to hospital last May, I was on a section two. I got discharged on the last day of my section. I should have just agreed to go inpatient and not argued with the amp. An amp is someone who has the authority to say whether you need to be in hospital or not, along with two medical professionals. Hospital for me was definitely needed because I was making attempts on my life every day. I ended up in hospital two days before my big attempt. Then my big attempt happened and I got detained under the Mental Capacity Act, which is different to the Mental Health Act. Mental Capacity Act means they can give you treatment against your will. They act in your best interest. With me, they tried to sedate me with midazolam because there was a lot of lorazepam, so and they did nothing. So they sat a security guard outside the cubicle and a HCA next to me. My sugar levels dropped dramatically because what I took was an was a diabetic medication that lowers your sugar level quite quickly called glucosamine. I'll put it on screen so you know what I mean. But boy, hospital is nowhere you want to be. <laughs> I did make a friend in, when I was in hospital for a year called Georgie. And Georgie is, I can say that she's got 20,000 followers. Like, you go girl. But me and Georgie went on walks together. She was on one to, she was on one, -to -one a squad leave, so we had a staff member with us. And we took them around the behind the hedges. And no one can see us. <laughs> but with hospitals, especially psychiatric hospitals, it's alarms going off. Now there is a difference between private and public. Private hospitals, you don't hear an alarm going off. Public hospitals, NHS hospitals, you do hear an alarm going off. Personally, even though they have medicated me, staying in a private hospital was better, I received better treatment than when I was in an NHS hospital. I found the NHS hospitals very quick to discharge, it didn't really do anything to help. Theory, which is a mental health hospital group, did really well helping me. It gave me activities to do, one to one. The staff got me out of my room and played chess with me and they lost every single time. One thing I, I will say I'm good at is chess. I, I used to compete so yeah I can play chess. Fun fact about me. I don't think I've ever shared that in here. Sorry, I'm just going out the window and there's a cat. I normally have my curtains closed, my blinds closed because I like the dark. So that's a big thing about being in the dark. And I'm used to that. When I was in hospital, I kept the curtains closed because of my migraines. I didn't have the light on. I had my night light on as it changed colour. The ins and outs of living in hospital are the same though, in NHS and private. You have meal times, you have medication times, and the rest of the time you left to your own devices. For me, I spent most of my time in bed because I was very tired all the time. And now I'm on meds that help me a lot. I started on lithium in my year long admission, and lithium has been the biggest lifesaver for me. So I am grateful that I asked. Because it was me who asked if I could call a mood stabiliser and the consultant agreed that it'd probably help me. And we tried lithium and we slowly increased it and I'm on a thousand milligrams with that. But like I said, a hospital isn't somewhere you want to be. 
I see so many TikToks saying, they didn't help me, they won't send me to hospital. You don't want to be in hospital. You lose your freedom, you lose your rights. It's just not a good place to be. When I see people wanting to go into hospital, all I can think is, you are an idiot. Like, there are some things that, yes, you need hospital for. If you, if you make a suicide attempt that's serious, that could have killed you, then yeah, I agree, hospitals need it. If you're psychotic, hallucinating, delusions, paranoia, hospital will work. But for anxiety, and these are things that can be treated in a community, hospital just isn't somewhere you want to be. I believe that hospitals are there for a reason. I think that they need more beds because a lot of people are struggling with their mental health these days. The reason I make mental health videos is to try and help people because I've lived, I've lived through these things and I want to share my experience. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about Impatient, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new, like I said at the beginning, please consider subscribing, turn notifications on, leave a like, drop a comment, give me a video request. I don't have any more video requests at the moment, so I'm making videos that I think are worth making. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.